This is Ben with bkashaaudio.com, and today we're going to take a look at the Helm Synthesizer. The Helm Synthesizer is a cross-platform synth that runs on Linux, OS X, and Windows. There are LV2, VST, VST3, AU versions of the plugin, as well as 32 and 64-bit versions. You can download it in your Linux distribution or from uh, the website, which I'll include a link to in the video description. And I highly recommend that you check out the manual, which is very detailed and goes through all the features of the synth. But today we're just going to do a basic overview of the interface. I have the Helm synth opened up in standalone mode on my machine, and I have an Akai Max 49 keyboard hooked up to it. And right now I have an 80s patch loaded. So let's start in the top left hand corner of the screen. If we click the blue helmet icon, we get access to some of the settings that are available. We can turn the graphics on and off. So if we uncheck animate graphics, you won't see any of the uh, animations of the oscilloscope or the VU meters. We can set it to check updates. We can adjust the size of the user interface, which is very useful if you have a large screen uh, or television that you do production on. You can make it much bigger. We can adjust what our output channels are, our sample rate, buffer size, and our MIDI inputs. So those are all accessible from the blue helmet icon. From there we'll move over to the right and if we click anywhere here we have access to the preset browser. Uh, the presets are divided into three different categories. You have the factory presets and the selection is, you can select multiple categories at once. So right now I have ARP, Bass, and Key selected, and I can click them again to deselect them. So if I just want to search Bases, I can select Bass. That will only show me Bases, and I can type in Pluck, and I can find a Pluck sound. As soon as you click it, it loads, and your preset is loaded. At the bottom of the window, you can import a bank, you can export a bank, for instance, if you want to back up all your user patches. And you can save a new copy of a patch or delete an existing patch. Beneath the uh, patch selection window, we have our save option. If you create a new patch, you can put in the name of the patch, the author name, select the location to save it to, give it a category. This is very intuitive and easy to follow. I like this a lot. You can select to export a single patch via the export button and if you click browse that is equivalent to just clicking anywhere above in this gray area. To initialize to the init preset you right click anywhere in this area and select load init patch and this will give you the initial init sound. To the right we have your master volume adjustment. This slider moves it up and down. If you want to reset a value in Helm, there's two ways to do it. You can double click the slider and it'll reset to zero or you can right click and select set to default value. The oscilloscope is located to the right of the volume. We have an arpeggiator located to the right of that. There's a BPM slider to adjust the rate and to turn it on, you can press the power button, and if we play a couple notes, we'll adjust the BPM. We can adjust the note frequency, so you can use the up and down uh, mouse wheel on your mouse, or you can also, uh, well, it looks like just the up and down mouse wheel, my mistake, or you can click and drag up and down and that will adjust the rate. And to the right of that, you can select how you want the rate to be determined. You can do it in seconds, tempo, tempo dotted, tempo triplets. We have a gate control to adjust the length of the arpeggiation. And an octave control to adjust how many octaves we go up. And then we can select the pattern to the right of that.
over here on the left, we have our oscillator section. There are two oscillators, and we'll look at them one at a time, but the, it applies to both. The, both the settings apply to both sides. So we have our waveform view here, and if you click above it, right now we have a, uh, a saw wave. If you click above it and you scroll, you can get different waveform types. So we have our sine, our square, saw up, saw down, three-step, pyramid. Same applies to the second oscillator. In between both of them, there is a mod knob. This mod knob allows the user to blend the two together. So, well, it's a little bit more complex than that. If you read the manual, if you turn the knob up, what happens is the first oscillator modulates the second, and the second od oscillator modulates the tone of the first. So you can get some interesting sounds with that. Beneath each oscillator is a tune and transpose knob. The transpose knob transpose knob actually adjusts, it's like a coarse tune, and then the tune knob is more like a fine tune. And you can adjust that for both. Beneath each oscillator, there is a unison section. So right now, we have each oscillator set to one voice. If you use your scroll wheel, you can increase that up to 15 voices. And beneath each voice value is a value to detune the additional voices. So if we're set to two voices or more, and we adjust using our mouse wheel this value underneath, that will adjust how much difference in tuning there is between the voices. And then beside that, we have H, which is our harmonized value. Again, there's more specific explanations of what those controls do in the user manual, so you should definitely check it out. To the right of that, we have our feedback module. So you can adjust the positive and negative feedback that you have, as well as transpose the harmonic in the feedback. That can lead to some pretty interesting sounds. I'm going to double click the knobs to reset them. Beneath the oscillators, we have our sub oscillator. Right now it's set to square wave, but you see there's a slider above it, and we can change the waveform type to whatever we want. It can be a sine wave, a square wave. So I'm going to jump over to the mixer, and we're just going to bring down these oscillators and bring up the sub. The octave button drops down the sub an octave from the note that you're playing. And the shuffle button is sort of a fine pitch adjustment for the sub. To the right of the sub, we have the mixer that allows us to mix oscillator 1, oscillator 2, the sub, as well as the noise. There's no real adjustments for the noise uh, parameter. You just turn the volume of it up or down. To the right of that, we have the filter, which you can enable by clicking the power button. And you can adjust the filter by clicking and dragging anywhere in this display, or you can click and drag the sliders on the bottom and the right-hand side. You have this slider adjustment here. It will adjust what type of filter we have, the position of it. So that's a little bit more of a bandpass. And all these values can be automated, which I'll show you later. We have our 24. 
and then we have a shelf filter and three different shelf types that we can choose. To the right, a drive. Our envelope depth. And key tracking. If you slide this to the right, the key tracking is active. If it's in the center, key tracking isn't active. And if it's to the left, you have a negative value for your key tracking. To the right of this, we have the stutter. The stutter takes a sample of the sound and then repeats it at whatever frequency that you choose. So I'm adjusting that with the mouse wheel. To the right of that, you can choose what you want the frequency to be, the value. And you can get up into the audio range with that. And to the right of that is the resample rate, how often it resamples the sound. And we can adjust the seconds tempo beside that. We have a distortion module to the right of that. Several different distortion types. This is pretty self-explanatory. Beneath that we have a delay that has sort of an analog sound, which you can hear as I adjust the feedback. Sorry, when I adjust the frequency, you can hear that. Beneath that, we have our reverb. Sort of a unique formant filter here. This allows you to go between different formant vowel sounds. That's pretty useful for making a talking bass or a sort of dubstep bass. So this upper region here that we've reviewed, that's sort of the audio uh, oscillator region. And everything from the middle down is more to do with modulation or uh, ADSR filter. So we have our ADSR envelope here for amplitude. Standard ADSR, our filter envelope. So if we have our filter active, Pretty standard stuff for a synth. An additional modulation envelope that can be placed anywhere and mapped to anything, which we'll go over in a moment. We have three LFOs. Each LFO, you can adjust the type of waveform, again, by clicking above the display. And they have all sorts of crazy LFO types. And these can be mapped anywhere. You can choose if you want it to be synced to your DAW or run free, the frequency, and the value. So we have three of these that can be mapped anywhere. To the right of the LFOs, we have a step sequencer, which is very similar to the performer in Massive. And you can adjust the amount of steps, the frequency, a slide value, and this can be applied to, again, anything. And you can drag the values up and down. To the right of this, we have a keyboard mod section. These will intercept messages from your keyboard. So if it supports aftertouch, uh, or you have a mod wheel or pitch wheel that you want to apply to something, uh, these can be assigned and they will affect values up here at the top. We have our portamento to the right. We have velocity tracking, our pitch bend amount, and the amount of voices that are allowed in our synth. Right now we're set to six. We can up that value if we want. So one of the things that's great about Helm and it makes it somewhat similar to Massive is that you can map anything and modulate anything in, in sort of a, a similar way to what Massive does. So you'll notice that there's these 
little helmet icons that are grayed out besides the LFOs and the filters. And let me just show you how you can use that. So for instance, if we want to take this mono LFO one and we want to apply it to our filter, you can click the helmet and you'll notice that controls in the interface light up green. These are controls that you can assign this LFO to. So for instance, if we want to modulate our filter to go like this with LFO one, I'll float my mouse over this bottom slider and using my scroll wheel on my mouse, I will raise or lower it. And you can see that the LFO is it's drawing a modulation line. So to finalize that, I'll click the helmet again. And if I play a note on my keyboard, you should be able to hear the filter moving. And we're going to raise the peak of that and just raise it up a bit. Now this filter can be moved, uh, well, assigned to other values as well. It, for instance, if we want the drive to move up, and if we want to have the formant move around, we can do all that. So this can lead to soon some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, we can also take something like the step sequencer and we can assign that to the uh, transpose value and that'll adjust our pitch around. Well, that sounds pretty terrible, but it's cool. And you can definitely do some interesting things with it if you spend some time with it. So you can not only apply these to uh, values up here, but for instance, if you wanted to apply your envelope to the attack parameter of the envelope, you could do that as well, and it would modulate how quickly your attack functions. Let's reset, let's make another init patch. And if I take this init sound and I apply a filter to it, and my keyboard outputs aftertouch. So if I click aftertouch and I apply this, the harder I press on the key, it should modulate the value. But I actually think I don't have aftertouch enabled on my keyboard. So it was a good idea, but I didn't have it set up. Um, so there's a lot you can do with this. In future tutorial videos, I'm going to go through making some patches. And as I make patches, I will make them available for download on the website. Um, but this is a really powerful synth. Um, it's one of the most featureful ones I have found on Linux. And uh, even if you don't use Linux, you can use it in Windows and OS X. You can use it in your DAW, standalone. It just runs on everything. Uh, it's great open source software. So if you like this tutorial, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And find more useful tutorials at bkashaaudio.com.